We are Scott and Shelley, and we are doing the Adventure of a Lifetime, a 6,000 mile, one year journey on America's Great Loop. Come join us. As we approached Marathon from the Little Shark River, a storm front moved in and gave us quite a ride. Thankfully, we could fit under the seven mile bridge and got into the marina before it got too much worse. With wide open spaces and little to stop it, the wind can really kick it up fast. Most of the time we anchor both to save costs and because we just enjoy it. We wanted to meet up with fellow loopers friends this time, so we splurged and spent two straight weeks at the marina. Right next to the pool, with air conditioning. Such a luxury. The marina was beautiful, with a saltwater pool, outdoor lounge areas, and outdoor dining. It definitely felt like paradise. Days consisted of outdoor yoga, long walks, swimming in the pool, and visiting. I know, rough life. So we're here watching the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 50 something, I'm not sure. Yeah, who cares? But Tampa it's a Super Bowl. And Kansas City. And we're in Marathon, Florida. It's behind us. It's minus 10 degrees in the Kelv. And we are not there. We're here where it's hot. I went swimming in the swimming pool that way today. So this picture just really cracks me up because obviously I didn't look in the background before I took it because it looks like I have giant ears or antennas growing out of my head. We were invited out to Sombrero Reef to try snorkeling with some friends. Both Scott and I have a lot of anxiety about this. We both grew up on the Great Lakes, where there are no sharks, stinging jellyfish, or other predators. Now we know the best way to get over your anxiety is just to do it, so we decided to go ahead and give it a try. Now you know those videos of people swimming with sharks, touching fish, and having fun underwater? Yeah, this is not that. We both want to like it, and we think it looks like fun, yet when we got in the water, we each felt significant anxiety, and all we could think of was, there are things that can bite me, and shark. It will attack and devour anything. It is as if God created the devil and gave him jaws. Thankfully, the only shark we did see was the nurse shark that hung around the boat. There's another one outside the gate. Scott, you see that? Yeah. Uh huh. Now these are the five species you find here in the Florida Keys and of course the coastal waters of Florida. We have green sea turtles, loggerheads, Kim's Ridley, Tossville, and Weatherback. Here at the hospital today we have 55 sea turtles for you to see. But we do not have any leatherbacks and I will explain to you a little more about that. The Turtle Hospital opened in 1986 to rehab injured sea turtles with the goal of returning them to the sea. 
and to educate the public through outreach programs. They also work towards policies to make the beaches and water safe and clean for the sea turtles. The turtle hospital contains up-to-date equipment needed to perform the variety of surgeries on the different types and sizes of sea turtles. They treat a variety of ailments such as impactions caused by swallowing items like the plastic grocery bags, shell damage caused by collision with boat propellers, entanglement injuries from fishing gear, and a disease called fibropapliomatosis a debilitating disease that causes external tumors that may grow so large and hanging as to hamper swimming, vision, feeding, and potential escape from predators. This disease affects over half of the juvenile green sea turtle population around the world. The Turtle Hospital has successfully treated and released over 1,500 sea turtles since its founding. The turtles are released in a variety of ways and at different locations depending on the species. When you take a tour, the money you pay for your ticket goes to help fund and sustain the hospital for future turtles in need. I could see the joy in the people working there. It was obvious to me it was a labor of love. It is an amazing place. I had no idea something like this existed. So it was an enlightening and enjoyable visit. Out for a walk this morning taking Buddy, and it is freaking hot down here. Um, it says it's high of 80, but with the humidity, it really feels more like it's 90 and it doesn't really cool off at night, so we're very grateful to have a marina. There are roosters and chickens up around the gas station. Walking in Marathon sometimes felt like playing a game of Frogger. Only one side had a path, the traffic was constant, and you were constantly dodging either people or cars. My one wish is that they could make the main road a little more pedestrian and bike friendly. We walked down to board a boat to take us out to a tiny island called Pigeon Key. We were used to an 8 mile an hour boat, a very slow trawler, so this felt like we were just flying. It was windy and oh so much fun. On the way out, the crew saw some floating plastic in the sea, so they slowed down and went back to pick it up. 
garbage, especially plastics, is a big issue in our oceans. And as we learned at the Turtle Hospital, garbage is especially dangerous for the marine wildlife. Pigeon Key is a unique destination located in the Florida Keys, and most people know it as the tiny island under the old Seven Mile Bridge. Back in the early 1900s, this island was used as a work camp for the men who built the Key West extension of the Florida East Coast Railway. Henry Flagler, who was a key in development of Eastern Florida, designed the railway extension to connect mainland Florida to the Florida Keys. Well, you got a railroad car you can take over here? Yeah. <laughs> More than 400 workers lived in this tiny railroad village. It did have a post office, a commissary, and a one-room school during the Seven Mile Bridge's construction period from 1908 to 1912. What impressed me most during this visit was the structure and rigor that Flagler took to keep his workers safe. In an era before legal requirements and federal inspectors, he was way ahead of his time for employee safety and sanitation. It is a testament to him that there were no outbreaks of diseases among 400 men in extremely close living quarters over the entire five years. These historical buildings used to house workers are now used for marine science education programs. The Assistant Bridge Tender's House is the on-island museum that features artifacts, portraits, and stories of those who have called this island home over the last hundred-some years. Scott and I went up the ramp that leads up to the pedestrian bridge, which is the old railway bridge. It is under construction, so it is not usable at this time, and we honestly probably weren't supposed to be up there. But you know, we are exploring. Some coconuts. is just beautiful. I didn't know that's what they were. Yeah. Little tiny snails. So baby snails? I don't know. They're some sort of snails. How do you know? These? Yeah. 
because I've seen them with fresh water. Okay. Little lakes had the same type. I'll kill it. After an enjoyable afternoon, we returned back to Marathon, looking forward to our next adventures. Okay, Harbor. 